So back in 2009, I had a patient that needed regular vision checks to track the changes in her prescription. She would often go months between visits, often missing her scheduled appointments. When she would show up, she'd skip work and waste most of her day to spend just a few minutes with me. See, that was the year that I got my first iPhone, and that's when it all started. I still remember that day. I was sitting inside my exam room, finishing up the chart to the patient I'd just examined. There was a line of patients outside the door. You see, I could only go so fast. 20 patients a day, 100 patients a week, all there to have their eyes examined. You know the drill. Come on inside and have a seat. It's great to see you again. All right, let's get started. Then what I do is project onto the wall your standard eye chart. Please cover up your left eye and read off the smallest line of letters you can see. EVO TZ2, she said. Fantastic. Now let's switch over and do the same for your other eye. That's when she stopped me. She said, Dr. Lee, why can't we just do this at home? Those words steered themselves into my imagination. And for the last six years, I've been working to make her wish come true. Her thoughts made me realize that the current system of eye care is not just broken, but has many flaws. Those flaws being scheduling, discrimination, and technology. Scheduling is an issue with eye exams because there's a limited number of doctors. Did you guys know that by 2025, there's an estimate that the US will have a shortage of over 90,000 doctors? That equates to about 400 million exams per year in all specialties, a huge lack of care. Doctors don't like working evenings and weekends, and honestly, I don't blame them. I mean, I never wanted to work evenings and weekends either. But the fact of the matter is, that's when the majority of the population is free. Scheduling during lunchtime, taking time off work, that can be a hassle. And when doctors don't run on time, that can really put a hamper in your day. So just talking about scheduling and getting things done, when was the last time any of you checked your batteries in your smoke detector? <laughs> so it only takes a few seconds, yet you're twice as likely to die in a fire with dead batteries in a smoke detector than one that's fully functional. It's incredibly difficult to convince people to take even a few seconds out of their year to reduce the risk of death. Imagine how hard it is to convince people to take a few hours out of their day for a routine eye exam. Now, what if we could create a system in vision care that could work on your schedule and not on others? Discrimination is the second issue with eye exams. I've personally seen racial discrimination, discrimination based on income level, and insurance card discrimination. I've witnessed an entire family come into a clinic with a certain type of insurance card, mind you, only to be told that there were no appointment slots available for them, when in fact, there were actually appointment slots available for more lucrative patients. I remember the situation where a young gentleman came into the clinic and ended up leaving because the staff members did a poor job trying to understand what he was trying to say. He was from a foreign country, he had an accent, dressed a little differently, and because of that, was treated poorly. Now, what if we could create a system in vision care that could make it nearly impossible to discriminate against anyone. Technology is the third issue with eye exams. A lot of the equipment is decades old, is expensive to purchase, and in many cases, is not very user-friendly for the patient. So as an example, the foropter, that big bulky machine that doctors place in front of your face, the one where they give you choices, one, two, or three, or four, <laughs> Well, that machine hasn't seen innovation in decades. The problem with technology, especially in healthcare, is when things work, people are not incentivized to make things more optimized or efficient for patients like yourself. I remember the situation where a young female came into the clinic only to be scared away by the air puff test. She ended up leaving after examination, never coming back for follow-up visits. Now, balance that with studies that show how mobile device applications greatly increase engagement in education. Imagine what that could do for vision care and healthcare in general. What if technology that seemed impossible today was made within reach? So with all these flaws in the vision care system, was I able to make any strides in my search for a solution? 
Well, I certainly faced a lot of opposition. Groups of doctors that basically said, patients like yourself should not have the right to make any choices in your vision care. That if you, as patients, wanted to focus on glasses or contact lens examinations, that you should be forced to do a whole slew of tests in the front and back of your eyes. In other words, what they're saying is, patients like yourself should either do a whole gamut of tests, or you shouldn't have the right to do any test at all. You see, for me, I see things differently. In this world, there are about 285 million people that are visually impaired. About 40% of those people can have their vision fixed and corrected with basic eye exams and prescription glasses. If there is even a single person out there that's affected by the system and paying for it with their own sight, that matters to me. Vision is precious and something we all deserve. I say, if you can visualize a future that is great for everything, do everything you can to make that future a reality. I'm proud to say that future is now. The culmination of six years of long and hard work has resulted in the delivery of an online eye exam that can be taken anywhere at any time. All you need is a computer and a smartphone. That's it. What this means is greater accessibility in India, China, Africa, rural locations, basically anywhere in the world. I'm extremely excited for what this technology will bring to both North America as well as the rest of the world. So my question is this, what is right? Forbidding a person from seeing unless they first allow you to invasively test their eyes or to allow a person to see this beautiful world and then following up with tests later on? I'll leave that question up to you, as I believe that is a debate and idea worth spreading. Thank you.